basic concepts in epidemiology the purpose of this lecture is to introduce some of the key concepts in epidemiology which are routinely introduced a little later in the course but it is felt that some understanding of this concept at this stage will make the understanding of epidemiology more clear and more interesting so the first of the concept is the importance of clear definitions and clear criteria one of the most frequent requirement in epidemiology is to measure the amount of disease in the population uh, that means that we need definition to identify a case from a normal person in the population now imagine if 10 different people go in the population to identify cases so that we can count the cases and they all use their own discretion to judge whether the person is a case or normal person so definitely depending upon their judgment some of the cases will be classified as normal people some of the normal people will be identified as cases and the actual figure that will be reported will be very different from the actual burden of disease in the population so when the beginning becomes wrong the actual amount measured is wrong all the future steps are all rendered useless so it is very important to know to have clear cut guidelines so as to even if there are 10 investigators on a country wide basis there may be thousands of investigators they should have very clear definition or clear cut criteria of whom to classify as case they should apply the criteria and if those are satisfied the person is classified as a case of the disease otherwise is a normal person and the guideline should be so clear that out of anybody out of these thousand or even if all of them apply on the same person on a case let's say the case is classified case by all of them so these criteria should be very clear discreet and should not be influenced by their own judgment so a vague definition of a case may increase or decrease the reported frequency of the disease the actual figure will be different and the reported figure will be different and rest of the study is useless then if known cases are included as cases and true cases are not identified the study is rendered futile so we must have well defined clear cut criteria if you want to report the actual burden of disease in the population next concept is type of data or variable this is a very fundamental issue because the other types of studies the next all other lectures will touch this concept at some of the other point so it is very important to have very clear understanding of two broad types of data in the very beginning and these two broad type of data are qualitative data and quantitative data qualitative data qualitative data means that the attribute that we are looking for is either present or absent for example i want to study the i want to study the immunization coverage of measles in a given population i want to see out of 100 eligible children how many children are immunized against measles so the parameter is either present or absent so a child whom i am examining at present can either be immunized or not immunized so the variable is either absent or present in the study subject we can count the people having the attribute under study so i can count the eligible children who are immunized for measles let's say x out of 100 eligible children are immunized so i have been able to count of people people who have the attribute under study and the results of the study group are expressed as in this example as a percent x percent of the study population is immunized against measles it can be proportion ratio or rate and hence the terms that you must have heard somewhere incidence rate prevalence rate attack rate are can be applied only to qualitative data where we can count the subjects who have the attribute example we have already discussed quantitative data quantitative data has a magnitude 
which can be measured on a scale. For example, weight, height, calorie intake, pulse rate, systolic BP, etc. Each subject in the study population has some amount of the attribute and it is measured in all the subjects. For example, if I want to find out the weight, I want to assess the weight, body weight of first semester students. I will measure the body weight of each student and it is not that some uh, student, every student will have some weight. So I will measure in all the students, add up all the values and divide it by the number of students to arrive at a mean weight of first semester students. So quantitative data is has a magnitude, is present in every subject and measured on a scale and it is the group is summarized by the mean value of the group. Other summary values are standard deviation, standard error, etc. that we will discuss in the relevant lectures. Example, height, weight, pulse rate, systolic BP, etc. Third concept, very important concept of significance. Now, let us build up upon previous uh, example. I have weight first semester students and the mean weight has come out to be 60 kg. Now, I go on to measure the weights of second semester students and the average or the mean weight comes out to be 60.5 kg. Now, I will say that numbers don't lie. So, obviously, second semester students are heavier compared to first semester students. What will you people say? You will say, it's just difference of 0.5 kg. It doesn't make a difference. They are comparable. 0.5 kg, it may be just by chance. Next time when you measure, it may be the other way around. The first semester may come out to be 60.5 and the second semester may come out to be 60 kg. So, we don't agree. 0.5 kg difference is no difference. It is just by chance. So, significance of the difference between two groups implies that the difference is too large to be due to chance alone. Now, I will ask you a question that you feel that 0.5 kg difference is not significant. Then, what level of difference would you consider to be significant? Difference of 1 kg, 1.5 kg, 1.75 kg or 2 kg or 10 kg. What should you think will be the difference after which you will consider that one semester students are actually heavier than the other semester students? This is decided by test of significance. There is something known as null hypothesis which assumes that all the differences between any two groups are purely due to chance. That is, all the differences, whether it is 0.5 kg or 10 kg, are purely due to chance and that is, they are insignificant. So, we apply a test of significance to see whether the null hypothesis is true or not. If null hypothesis is proved to be true, we say the difference, whether it is 0.5 kg or 5 kg, is due to chance alone and there is no significant difference and if null hypothesis is proved wrong, we say the difference even if it is just 0.5 kg, it is significant. We will talk about the test of significance in again in another relevant lecture. Test of significance, a little bit can be introduced right now, is by applying the test of significance, we calculate the probability value, the probability that is the p value of the null hypothesis being true. So, if this probability of null hypothesis being true is high, that means the null hypothesis is true and the difference is insignificant. But if the probability is too low, what is too low? If probability is less than 0 0.05, we consider null hypothesis to be not true and we consider that the difference between the two groups is significant. Whether the difference is 0.5 kg or 5 kg or 10 kg, but if the p-value is less than 0 0.05, we reject the null hypothesis and we say that the difference is significant. So this is the meaning of significance, p-value and the term significant. P-value, you will very often will see this uh, term and it is the probability of the null hypothesis being true. The remaining concepts 
will be made clear in part 2 of the lecture as to avoid overwhelming information. Thank you.